So today I'm making a video on why people sell their homes and this is specifically for real estate investors that are looking for motivated sellers. Meaning someone owns a property and for some reason they're gonna discount it. That's the deal that I wanna get my hands on. Like where do I find those deals, Chris Crone? And at the end of the day, there are three major reasons why someone will deeply discount their house and I'm gonna share all of them with you right now. One, one shot, not a future before. Let me give you an example of why really good deals kind of pop up out of nowhere. Here's a beautiful, attractive house. The house is worth $390,000. The person who owns that home only owes $280,000. Newsflash, they lost their job. And I don't know if it's gonna take three months in this job market, six months or a year to find a job, but they have a mortgage. And if 62% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, let's just say that this beautiful home is owned by someone that only has maybe a month's worth of money in the bank, which means they're in a very desperate situation. They could literally lose the house or they want to alleviate that mortgage. They want to have a reason to move on. Maybe they're gonna get a new job and it's gonna require them to go somewhere else. For whatever reason, they're now going to discount this $390,000 house. And to what extent? Well, it depends how desperate their situation is. And they need someone to take their house off their hands or to at least cover the mortgage or do something because what's happening in the meantime, they're probably racking up credit card debt because they don't have a job, they don't have income, they're trying to pay for groceries and gas and things like that. They've got really big problems. If an investor comes along and says, hey, I can solve those problems. In fact, I can write you a check for cash. All of a sudden, those problems get solved very quickly. The equity that's available in that home might get split between the investor and the actual person, which is way better than actually just losing the house. Or if the house actually needs to get fixed up because of the way that it was treated and it's been deeply discounted, the market's not responding to it, an investor has the ability to be the solution that swoops in and says, all right, let's find a win-win scenario. The reason why this is such an advantage to the person is they don't have 30 or 40 or 60 days or 90 days to list their house on the market to find someone to buy it at normal price. And they also might be able to skip out on all sorts of other fees if an investor just comes in and says, hey, I can assume the mortgage or let me just take the house off your hands. Let me cash you out on some of the equity that you have. That's how you end up arriving at a win-win. So let's talk specifically about what wholesaling is. Wholesaling real estate is a way to buy and sell real estate contracts. We're talking about paper. No, you don't have to be a realtor. You don't have to be licensed. It means that you found someone with a really good deal and you're basically gonna write up an offer that says, hey, I know that it might be worth this, but I'm gonna give you an offer for that. And once they sign the dotted line, you have this piece of paper. You have the right to buy at that discounted price. You're now going to turn, find other investors and say, hey, who wants to take this deal off of my hands, but leave something for me? And that finder's fee or at the closing table, you can earn 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. I've even seen deals where you can make well over $100,000, believe it or not. So a wholesaler's entire job is to basically find deeply discounted homes and then pawn them off to investors. And what they're doing is they're basically brokering solutions for people that are in a tight pinch on their house or just they are don't wanters. They don't even want their house anymore. And there's a way for you to make money, basically repurposing it into the marketplace. So I'm gonna tell you right now that wholesaling is a great career opportunity if you're thinking, I want to find a way to, instead of having like a normal nine to five job, as a wholesaler, Chris, can I make a hundred or two or $300,000 a year? And the answer is yes. In fact, you can make more money than that, but you're going to have to, number one, get comfortable talking to people that are in distressed or difficult situations. Number two, there's going to be a big focus on marketing. There's going to be a big focus on networking, basically finding these really, really good deals. And then next, you're going to have to make a lot of offers at these lower prices to find the people where that win-win deal can actually be struck. And I'm going to share with you now the three biggest reasons why people get motivated in the first place so that you can start figuring out why those deals exist in the first place. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna reveal where you go to actually find all of these deals. All right, three reasons why you find really big discounted deals. And here's the first one right now. It has to do with their job. So it's either issues of unemployment or it's job expectation changes, right? Like you realize that when we went through the pandemic that there's a lot of people that got used to working from home and some studies have come out where basically large corporations are being told, hey, you shouldn't let your people work entirely from home. It's actually not producing the level of productivity that you want. And so there's definitely this clawback of, hey, come back into the workplace. In fact, if you take a look at this graph, we had 3 million Americans that lost their jobs in October. And it's like, okay, well, when you look at the whole workforce, it's not awful, but for these 3 million people, it was terrible. 
When people lose their jobs, by the way, they're looking for reasons to downsize, basically save money. They may need to relocate somewhere else and because most human beings, for whatever reason, they're not subs on my channel that are basically being smart and putting money away for investments. And because of that, they get, they get caught in a tough place. And here's the bottom line. If a homeowner has owned real estate for four or five years or more, they have well over $100,000 of equity. So for them, if they're in a tight pinch, they're thinking, what did I really do to earn that equity? And so they're willing to share some of that. They're willing to lower the price, especially if someone can come in and say, hey, take my problems off my hands. The second reason why you can find a really good deal in today's market is, let's just blame it on the economy. We got mortgage rates right now that are at 7%, the highest they've been in 21 years, according to Freddie Mac. And the average cost of living in America right now is between $2,500 and $3,500 a month. And so you have some people are like, geez, that's a lot of expectation for me to step into. That's expensive. I'm just going to get rid of my house. And there's a a lot of people that own homes that are feeling that financial stress and when I teach you some of the marketing techniques of how you find these people and market to them for a lot of them it's just like thank you hats off to you I needed someone to come in because I'm gonna actually show you how to use someone else's money to help solve their problems and when you do all of a sudden it's like I can pay my kids dental bill and I get caught up on some of my my, my, my car payments that I didn't make and all of a sudden I can actually put ten twenty thousand dollars in the bank now you have a chance to move them from behind the eight ball to really advancing moving forward and actually feeling like they're ahead of the game. And then the third reason why you can find a really good deal is people bite off more than they can chew. I mean that they buy more house than they should and so what they do is they just wind up with this really expensive mortgage and just wondering how did I put myself in this situation, right? Mortgage or rent is by classification your number one expense. Right, it's more than a cell phone, it's more than a car payment. It's the most expensive thing and when you bite off more than you can chew, that can put you in a tough spot, especially if you have really high interest rates. We have some people literally that have houses out there with interest rates as high as 8.3% on their 30 year fixed. And so, whereas we're predicting multiple rate drops up to six in 2024, it's like what happens when that mortgage rate drops to 6% or 5%? Well, all of a sudden, you might be chopping off 500, 1,000, 1,500, or $2,000 off of what your existing mortgage is. That's a really, really big deal for some people, but they can't wait for that to happen. And so they're basically saying, hey, this really expensive mortgage, I need someone to come in and actually solve this problem for me. Because at one point it made sense and then they wanted it and now their life circumstances have changed. They need someone else to come in and basically rescue them from this really expensive debt. Bottom line is you can't trust a bank to be your financial planner because their job is to basically make money on lending you money in the game of real estate. It's up to you to make sure that you're making financially responsible choices in your life. Check this out. Roughly 38% of home buyers said that they paid over the asking price in 2023, including 42% of first time home buyers. And it's like, well, if I wanted a home, that was the situation I found myself in. It's like, I can't control the prices. I can't control, you know, the interest rates, but if I want a home, this is what it looks like. And so if you feel over leveraged or you bit off more than you could chew, that could be another reason why all of a sudden you become a don't wanter. So many reasons why these deals exist. Exist, but what I need you to understand is that there are millions of these deals across the country right now. And if you know how to find them, you can be a part of the solution on saying, hey, I get it, you're in transition. If I can take this home off your hands, do something different with it, I'm telling you that there's a way for you to help them and also to profit. And if you wanna learn how to do that, you become what we call a wholesaler. Now, I want you to click the link below. I've got some details for you on exactly step-by-step -step what you do to become a wholesaler. And I will tell you this, if I had to start all over again, and I know that I have to have some type of lucrative six-figure career, this is where I'm starting. So if you wanna know how to take your financial game to a whole nother level, click the link below, let me show you. Which kind of brings up this point, Chris, which is the best strategy in real estate? I've heard you talk a lot about buy and hold, now you're talking about wholesaling. How do those really stack up against each other? Well, I made a video doing a comparison of both of them, and if you wanna see how that fight ended, click right here, let me show you.